Season 2 of A People's History of Kansas City is brought to you with support from the Mid-Continent Public Library. You may have heard about the Buffalo Soldiers, but one of the most incredible and untold stories of one of its most prominent members starts right here near Kansas City in Independence, Missouri. On November 15, 1866, Kathy Williams, a newly freed black woman from Independence, did something that forever changed history. She enlisted to serve in the United States Army. But there was kind of a major problem. It was illegal for women to join the service. This was the Reconstruction Era. The Civil War had ended a year before, and Congress had just passed the Army Organization Act, meant to help fix the peacetime military. This act created six new what were then called colored regiments, two cavalry and four infantry units. Regiments made of black men serving in the enlisted ranks with white officers. This was the beginning of what would become known as the legendary Buffalo Soldiers. This is the first time in the nation's history that black men had served in uniform in peacetime. Buffalo Soldiers, when they originally started, were not actually called Buffalo Soldiers. They were just all black units. It was 1866 when Kathy Williams, a black woman, made that historic decision to enlist, to join these new black units made up of men. This is how she enlisted. Back then, uh, when in the military, they didn't get, you didn't take a physical. All you did was stand in the line. You want to sign up? Just come right here, sign your name. She signed her name, William Kathy. Kathy Williams switched her name around to William Kathy, disguising her identity for years, pretending to be a man so she could serve. A bold move and a pivotal moment in American history. Not everyone in government, not everyone in the military believed in having black soldiers because they didn't want to give them any ideas of equality, let alone freedom. I think she had a vision of what freedom might be like, even though she had never known freedom. Kathy Williams was one of the only female African-American known to be a part of the Buffalo Soldiers when they came about. This is A People's History of Kansas City, a podcast from KCUR Studios. I'm Suzanne Hogan. Kathy Williams was the first known female Buffalo soldier, a significant feat, a brave act of heroism that unfortunately for Kathy was unfairly overlooked in her time and is still too overlooked today. Who was Kathy Williams? What motivated her? What kind of hardships did she face and what can we learn from her bravery? And if a woman is a slave and goes to being a soldier, that is one of the longest journeys in American history. This episode, it's all about the incredible story of trailblazer and American hero, Kathy Williams. A year ago, Kendrick Blackwood was giving friends in Kansas City a preview of the pandemic lifestyle from China. Now he's made it to the other side, and we're still here. We had to decide, are we leaving? Do we start planning to go away? Hear the whole story on Real Humans by Gina Kaufman, a new podcast from KCUR Studios, available wherever you get your podcasts. Hey everyone, I just want to take a minute to tell you how podcasts like A People's History of Kansas City get made. We are audience supported. That means we rely on people like you to give a few bucks so we can keep telling Kansas City stories. Local journalism is at the heart of our democracy and our community. With that in mind, please give what you can today at kcur.org slash donate. And thank you. I got my house on my back. Donna Madison is a storyteller. She regularly presents as Kathy Williams for different educational events. Oh, this, I get to be a soldier in the United States. <laughs> this is a video of one of her performances, done for Veterans Day a few years ago. Dressed in uniform, Donna displays all the supplies Kathy Williams would have had to carry in the infantry. It's a presentation that evokes an emotional response as Donna really takes on Kathy's persona and tries to bring her story to life. Time gets so bad. Things kind of go bad for me. I just kind of feel like, uh, I, I guess I've become her in a way. 
Kathy's story is very personal to Donna, whose father was also a Buffalo soldier and founded Kansas City's Alexander Madison chapter of the Buffalo Soldiers. He also used to perform and tell stories about the Buffalo Soldiers, and now Donna follows in his footsteps. To the point that Donna has literally traced Kathy Williams' footsteps, doing tons of research and actually going to the places where Kathy would have served for years disguised as a man. To places in Kansas, Colorado, New Mexico, investigating the later years of her life that partly remain a mystery today. These things uh, gave me an idea of Kathy's lifestyle, what was going on in her life and how she had to struggle to keep her identity uh, hidden. And I guess you would say the hardships. I could just imagine what the hardships were like for her. To me, it would have been awfully hard for a man. For a woman, it had to be even worse. Let's start at the beginning of Kathy Williams' story, before she enlisted in the Army, which starts in Independence, Missouri. It's hard to piece all the parts of Kathy's story together, but an invaluable article from an 1876 interview Williams gave to the St. Louis Daily Times gives us an idea of her story from her point of view. It's titled Kathy Williams' Story, and we'll hear from it throughout the episode, but this is how it starts. My father was a free man, but my mother a slave, belonging to William Johnson, a wealthy farmer who lived at the time I was born near Independence, Jackson County, Missouri. While I was a small girl, my master and family moved to Jefferson City. My master died there, and when the war broke out and the United States soldiers came to Jefferson City, they took me and other colored folks with them to Little Rock. Colonel Benton of the 13th Army Corps was the officer that carried us off. I did not want to go. Missouri and Kansas were contentious places during the Civil War with the Border Wars. And as Kathy describes, even though the Union was fighting to end slavery, many slaves like Kathy were forced to serve under the Union as the war continued. They took her and some more slaves to serve them, to work for them, like doing laundry and cooking and all that. Kathy uh, stated that, and this was in a in the uh, interview that they wanted her to cook for the executive group. And she said, told them she didn't cook. She didn't know anything about cooking. She worked inside the house, but she was not a cook. And uh, the commander said that uh, they would teach her how. Before she enlisted, Kathy did learn how to do those things, but she also learned how to care for the sick and wounded and the hardships of war. She witnessed the famous Battle of Pea Ridge, a bloody and pivotal Civil War battle that secured Missouri for the Union, defeating the Confederate Army in 1862. She hadn't been involved in anything that the war had uh, brought to her. So I imagine this was pretty horrific for her to see something like that for the first time. Throughout the rest of the Civil War, she continued to travel with the Union troops as a slave to Louisiana, Georgia, Virginia, Iowa. I saw the soldiers burn lots of cotton and was at Shreveport when the rebel gunboats were captured and burned on Red River. Eventually, she ended up at the Jefferson Barracks in St. Louis, Missouri, around the end of the Civil War. I think she had a vision of what freedom might be like even though she had never known freedom. The Emancipation Proclamation happened in 1863. Then in 1865, the 13th Amendment was passed, which abolished slavery. The Civil War ended. It was a monumental moment in American history, as newly freed Americans, like Kathy Williams, experienced self-autonomy for the first time. And, I mean, some of the things that she was forced to do were pr pretty much beyond anything we would know. And the thought of not having to do that anymore, I think in her mind was, how am I gonna make this work for me? Donna Madison says it was a time when everybody was coming to terms with this new post-war reality, a United States without slavery. Well, everybody who was a slave that was free Everybody's running around looking for a job. And you had uh, not only 
black folks looking for a job, you had white folks looking for a job. What am I going to do? How am I going to live? Which brings us to that historical decision that Kathy Williams made in 1866, after the act of Congress established six black regiments, the beginning of the Buffalo Soldiers. At this point, Kathy Williams had experience with troops in the service. She had seen battles, learned first aid, how to cook, do laundry, and to be around other soldiers. She decides to enlist for three years as a cook in the 38th Infantry. Disguising herself as a man, she switches her name around. She signed her name, William Cathy. William Cathy is seen spelled Cathy ending in E-Y and sometimes ending in A-Y. It's a clerical inconsistency that remains a mystery. And there are no known pictures of Cathy Williams, a.k.a. William Cathy or William Cathay, but her enlistment papers say she was a 22-year-old soldier with black eyes, black hair, black complexion at 5 foot 9 inches tall. Kathy said when she enlisted, there were only two people who knew her true identity. Only two persons, a cousin and a particular friend, members of the regiment, knew that I was a woman. They never blowed on me. They were partly the cause of my joining the Army. Another reason was I wanted to make my own living and not be dependent on relations or friends. There has been a lot of speculation around these two allies who knew Kathy's true identity while she served, what the relationship was like, how it influenced her decision, and how they may have helped her conceal her identity through the years. But like so many details around Kathy's life, those bits also remain a mystery. But the point is, this was a new beginning for Kathy, an opportunity for independence, to grow and do what she wanted to do, to be a soldier, enlisting to protect and serve the United States in a new era, to, like she says, make her own living. You were given an opportunity to prove yourself. They were going to take every opportunity to do just that. George Pettigrew also does storytelling with Donna Madison for the Alexander Madison chapter of the Kansas City Buffalo Soldiers. He's a Navy veteran and direct descendant of one of the original Buffalo Soldiers. My great-grandfather, Isaac Johnson, was a private. He was in Jefferson Barracks at the same time Kathy was, but I doubt he knew Kathy was a woman because first your mindset was there weren't any women in uniform. You didn't expect to see one. George says this time, during the Reconstruction era, after the Civil War when the Army Organization Act passed and Kathy and his great-grandfather, Isaac Johnson, decided to enlist, was an important moment in the history of African Americans serving in the military. But it wasn't by any means the beginning. But like so many stories of black history, it's a part of the story that's not as well known. There are stories as amazing or more amazing, and so often parallel the stories we do know about America. But it's just somehow the curtain is drawn when it comes to our participation in those events. And that's where I found my passion was to uncover those events that were part of our well-known history, but our part of it is nearly unknown. In terms of United States colonial history, African Americans have participated in every single war fought by or within the United States. Every war. The first American killed in the American Revolution was a black man named Crispus Attucks. Enslaved and free men fought on both sides of the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812, the Mexican-American War, the Civil War. Before slavery was abolished, there are stories of African-American uprisings, revolts. One of the most incredible, the story of Nat Turner's insurrection, an enslaved preacher who led a four-day rebellion in Southampton, Virginia. Then during the Civil War, over 180,000 black men served on the Union side. New African-American regiments were formed. There was the famous skirmish at Island Mound, which happened near Butler, Missouri the first time an all-African-American troop engaged in battle against the Confederates. The Union troop out of Kansas was made up of former Arkansas and Missouri slaves. And though outnumbered, they fought courageously and overpowered the Confederates, engaging in hand-to-hand combat. The New York Times even praised the Union soldiers for their, quote, desperate bravery. 
All this to say, there's a long, incredible history of African Americans fighting for freedom and justice, outside and inside the military, to shape this country. But George Pettigrew says, even in those years after the Civil War ended and slavery was abolished, discrimination and racism persisted. A theme evident in the 1997 movie, Buffalo Soldier. Keep your troops back, Captain Calhoun. Parade regulations, color companies 15 yards behind white. Not everyone in government, not everyone in the military believed in having black soldiers because they didn't want to give them any ideas of equality, let alone freedom. So when the Civil War was over and the country was totally disrupted because you're trying to stitch a nation back together and you still have two extreme points of view, trying to work out details and get this country back going together again, united. It was uh, difficult, very difficult. The Army Organization Act of 1866 that started the Buffalo Soldiers, like I said earlier, would be the first time in the nation's history that black men would serve in uniform for the U.S. Army in peacetime. But still some saw this move as a type of experiment, People were skeptical or even fearful to train and arm former slaves to be soldiers. So they sent them out west to protect the land acquired during the Louisiana Purchase. You know that giant swath of land in the country's midsection, purchased in 1803, that doubled the size of the United States. These soldiers' duty would be to help grow the west, protect wagon trails, commerce, and new settlers from American Indian tribes. Let's occupy that part of the country that we now own course, that part of the country was occupied. But nevertheless, things were viewed from a white point of view, from a white perspective. So if there was anyone out there other than white settlers, then that's land that was prime for taking. Well, there was a lot of going on because you can imagine somebody pitching a tent and parking a car on your front yard and telling you that you can't use your own kitchen anymore. Well, this is an analogy of what was happening to the American Indians, and of course, they push back. These black units were sent out west to protect the expanding western frontier. Settlers were encroaching upon land already occupied by native Great Plains and southwestern tribes, often while facing discrimination from the settlers they were there to help. If there was a problem in a settlement, they were happy as they could be to have any soldier show up, anybody show up that would help get the cattle back, help bring peace to the town, to uh, recover individuals that may have been uh, taken against their will by whoever. As long as there was a problem, these Black soldiers were welcome to solve the problem. And as soon as the problem was solved, they were welcome to leave, even on wagon trains. Even in spite of, at times, blatant discrimination, lack of proper medical care and equipment, and at times poor treatment from settlers and white officers, there were no black officers. George Pettigrew says the soldiers performed their duties with dignity. They had the lowest rates of alcoholism and desertion. And for many, like George's great-grandfather, Isaac Johnson, and our heroine, Kathy Williams, they started using this time in the service as an opportunity to learn, to read and write. These guys went in not just for a place to stay and and a paycheck. They went in and they took advantage of every opportunity. The tasks given to these Black units were hard and at times at odds with some of their own personal ideas. It should be noted that there is a deep history of Black and Brown affinity between American Indians and African Americans. Lots of Buffalo soldiers understood that the same racism that oppressed them was happening to Native peoples in the West. This later led to some disillusionment, like we'll learn in Kathy's story. But either way, at the time, they took on their duties and responsibilities with dignity, honor, and vigor. Even in the battles and and in the engagements out west with outlaws, bandits, rustlers, murderers, and of course the Native Americans that had inhabited that land for thousands of years, then there had to be a force. Which leads to the different theories of where the name Buffalo Soldiers comes from. Black soldiers had several nicknames, some you'd be familiar with, uh, including the N-word, but brunette and several other names were for Black soldiers. And they weren't meant in a complimentary way. 
Historians still debate on the exact origins of the name Buffalo Soldier, which first came from the name Wild Buffalo. Whether it was the term used by Plains Indians to describe just physical characteristics, the big coats they wore, or their hair and skin, or if it was meant to describe something deeper. To George, when he looks at what the buffalo meant to the Plains peoples and the history of those engagements in the West, what these units endured and how they fought, he thinks it was the latter. Once a buffalo is wounded, actually a bison, but once a buffalo is wounded, then it becomes even more dangerous. It is dangerous always, always. Once cornered or wounded, it bites and it comes after you. It will not shy away and you're not gonna cower it down. Well, that's a characteristic that black soldiers showed as well. Same characteristic that was shown at Island Mount was shown over and over and over and over again throughout uh, engagements in the West. And our brave trailblazer, Kathy Williams, was among them, living a life as William Kathy or William Cathay, one of those first Buffalo soldiers. Here's what we know about Kathy Williams' time as a Buffalo soldier. She was in the 38th Infantry Regiment. After enlisting in St. Louis, she battled a bout of smallpox, recovered, and then was sent out west. As soon as I got well, I joined my company in New Mexico. During her time in the service, as the infantry did, she walked and walked and walked and walked and walked. From Fort Riley, Kansas, the company marched over 500 miles to Fort Union, New Mexico, then to Fort Cummings, with over 70 pounds on her back. She was tough, a hardworking soldier, able to keep her identity hidden among hundreds of men for 22 months. Think about that. Things like going to the bathroom, bathing, receiving medical treatment. For almost two years, she concealed herself in really harsh circumstances. I was never put in the guardhouse. No bayonet was ever put to my back. I carried my musket and did guard and other duties while I was in the Army. Philip Thomas Tucker has written a few books about Kathy Williams' life and tons about history and the Civil War. She performed all her duties. She was proud and never having a problem with officers, never being disciplined. He says women fighting in battle or disguising as men to serve is nothing new. The warrior women have been as common in throughout history as, as warfare itself. Think of folk heroine Mulan. Loyal, brave, and true. It is my duty to protect my family. Warrior women like Joan of Arc, Hannah Snell, Rani Lakshmibai, Albert Cashier. Historians estimate that nearly a thousand women disguised themselves as men to serve on both sides during the Civil War. What makes Kathy Williams' story so incredible is that she is the first and only documented black woman to serve in the U.S. military as part of those Buffalo soldiers during that time. Which isn't to say there weren't more women that we don't know about. But she is, this many years later, the first and only one we do. So it's a rare distinction that she holds. And, you know, from that standpoint, she can be looked at today as as certainly a pioneer for all the many uh, U.S. women, black and white, that serve in today's military. Women have also played a role in every single military conflict in the U.S., serving as nurses, on the battlefield, in disguise or otherwise. During the Civil War, Harriet Tubman served as a scout and spy. In the early 20th century, U.S. women served as pilots, cryptographers, and rigged parachutes. But it wasn't until 1942 that Congress approved the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps that allowed women to actually enlist. Within that first group of women, 40 were black. The military remained segregated by gender and race up until 1948, when President Truman signed acts for integration though there were still limits to the percentage of women that could serve. But all this is to say is that what Kathy Williams was doing out there from 1866 to 1868 was unprecedented. And it helped pave the path for others. Finally, I got tired and wanted to get off. During Kathy's time as a Buffalo soldier, she was sick and had to receive medical care several times. 
all the while somehow able to keep her identity hidden. She served in New Mexico at Fort Bayard in hostile Apache territory and withstood multiple long marches until eventually her health really started to deteriorate. There are conflicting reports out there, some saying she got frostbite on her toes and they were amputated. Kathy did have her toes amputated and walked with a crutch in her later years. But whether that happened in or out of the service is unclear. But either way, the tough conditions eventually caught up to her. I played sick, complained of pains in my side and rheumatism in my knees. The post-surgeon found out I was a woman and I got my discharge. The men all wanted to get rid of me after they found out I was a woman. Some of them acted real bad to me. When Kathy's true identity was discovered, she was discharged on October 14, 1868. The surgeon's certificate of disability said she was feeble and physically and mentally unfit for duty. But even after her discharge, she resumed her identity as a woman, still working within the service at Fort Union as a cook, until she left. After leaving the Army, I went to Pueblo, Colorado, where I made money by cooking and washing. I got married while there, but my husband was no account. He stole my watch and chain, $100 in money, and my team of horses and wagon. I had him arrested and put in jail, and then I came here. Eventually, Kathy Williams ended up in Trinidad, Colorado. I like this town. I know all the good people here, and I expect to get rich yet. I have not got my land warrant. I thought I would wait till the railroad came and then take my land near the depot. Grant owns all this land around here and it won't cost me anything. I shall never live in the States again. You see, I've got a good sewing machine and I get washing to do and clothes to make. I want to get along and not be a burden to my friends or relatives. Kathy wanted to be free and independent. She was a veteran who risked everything to build a new life for herself. But as we'll learn, because she was a woman, people failed to recognize her time in the service at a really critical moment in her life. And this failure may have shortened her life. And even long after her death, her trailblazing legacy was almost plagued by that very same fate. Interested in learning more about today's episode? The Mid-Continent Public Library has you covered. Head over to mymcpl.org slash phkc to connect with behind-the-scenes looks at the making of a people's history of Kansas City, as well as companion reading lists, upcoming local history programs, and other great library resources. So these are things that Buffalo soldiers actually carried out in the field with them. William Wallace is a tour guide here at the Richard Allen Cultural Center in Leavenworth, Kansas, a black history museum outfitted in a former Buffalo soldier's home. It's an amazing place filled with stories and priceless artifacts about Kathy Williams' life and all the Buffalo Soldiers. Buffalo Soldiers, when they originally started, were not actually called Buffalo Soldiers. They were just all black units. William reminds me that Buffalo Soldiers became the name used to describe all black soldiers up until after World War II, until 1948 when President Truman finally passed that Army Integration Act. One of the most poignant parts of the museum is a room William refers to as the hate room. That says Leavenworth clan. Both those pictures were taken in 1933. So we know in 1933 there was a group of KKK right here in Leavenworth, Kansas. The largest item among the many items displaying horrific hate and racism in this room is a KKK uniform that William purchased himself at an auction. It's a hard room to be in. But Williams says he feels like it's an important part of American history. And unfortunately, the present, that can't be ignored. Something that we feared the most, we hated the most, and we fought the most, and it is a very significant part of African-American history, and it is to this very day. Because I said the KKK still exists to this day. You know, so it's not like they, they've disappeared. I said they still exist to this very day. So we want to tell our children who they are and what they are. So they're aware. I can't stress enough how moving and amazing this museum is, showing the heroism and service of black Americans, in spite of at times blatant ongoing racism. So this was our original museum. We started out in this house in 1992. Other items in the museum include large format prints of black pioneers of Leavenworth in the late 1800s, old artillery equipment, 
and artifacts from the AME Church across the street, which was a pivotal place during the Underground Railroad. That was called the Light of Freedom. They would put a lantern in that window. The Missouri River is two blocks down the street. The runaway slaves on the Missouri side could see that lantern and know to come to that church to get refuge. The Richard Allen Cultural Center is also an after-school tutoring center for Leavenworth youth. William grew up here in Leavenworth and says when he was a kid, they didn't learn about the Buffalo Soldiers. But that fortunately has changed because of the help of General Colin Powell and Trooper Jalester Linton, a retired Buffalo Soldier who went on to become a barber. He actually cut my hair and my brother's hair. He's the only one who ever cut my hair. General Powell also had his hair cut by Trooper Linton. And they came up with an idea to make a Buffalo Soldier monument at Fort Leavenworth, which was the place where the 1st Cavalry Regiment of the Buffalo Soldiers was formed back in 1866. The monument has beautiful bronze sculptures of Buffalo Soldiers by artist Eddie Dixon in an area called the Circle of Firsts, which recognizes the first contributions of Black Americans in the military. But Eddie Dixon's sculpture of Kathy Williams is not there. Kathy Williams fought to the bitter end to be recognized as a veteran who served in the military, to get a pension and support at a time when her health was fading. I don't believe in my personal mind that they ever planned on paying her a pension because they kept saying, this lady wasn't in the military. William Kathy was, and she said, I was William Kathy. You know, and her lawyers kept saying she was AKA William Kathy. Kathy Williams was William Kathy. And they drug it on and on and on. Donna Madison, the historical storyteller who portrays Kathy Williams' story, agrees. She says never getting that pension that she had earned in the end really hurt Kathy. She was in dire straits and needed help. She had no food. She had no heat. And she was sick. As I mentioned earlier, at this point, Kathy's toes had been amputated. And the aftermath of her time in the service took a toll on her body and health. Here's Donna again performing as Kathy. I'd be moving around with my creatures by that time. And when I filed for that picture, they say you get a third grade pension, but then the bones say no. Nobody knows for sure the details, but we know that Kathy Williams did not receive her pension, and she eventually died sometime between 1892 and 1900. Nobody knows where exactly she's buried. The sculpture that Eddie Dixon made honoring Kathy Williams was not included in the circle of firsts at Fort Leavenworth because of the circumstances in which she was discharged, basically that she had lied about being a woman. It's something that Donna Madison and George Pettigrew just cannot understand. Not to accept that here's someone that gave everything and risked everything, including her health, and probably shortened her life doing all that hard work. And if a woman is a slave and goes to being a soldier, that is one of the longest journeys in American history. And so... Okay, I know it's their decision to make. I don't happen to agree with it because this woman should be considered a patriot. Kathy Williams was one of the only female African-American known to be a part of the Buffalo Soldiers when they came about. Edna Wagner is the executive director at the Richard Allen Cultural Center, the Black History Museum in Leavenworth, Kansas. After the sculpture of Kathy Williams was not included in the circle of firsts, she decided to make a home for her here. We didn't want her story not to be told. Here on the South Lawn, just outside of the museum, Kathy's bust is proudly displayed, surrounded by roses. Hopefully we'll hear that one day, that announcement come out and say, hey, she's been exonerated. She is not, you know, considered a person who lied to the military, but wanted to come in and do the right things that she felt was gonna help her have a better life as well. Until then, people at this museum will keep telling Kathy's story. Edna Wagner says it's amazing to see all the young girls and female officers come by and visit the site. They have their pictures taken with the sculpture, have their change in command ceremonies here. It's a place of honor, and it's a place where many learn about Kathy Williams' story for the very first time, where they learn that she was a patriot, a brave, groundbreaking woman who battled unprecedented challenges to fight for a better life and who forever shaped American history.
It's not African American history, it's American history. And we need to teach our children, whether they're black, white, or whatever, that about African Americans who did fabulous things and historical things in the history and the raising of America. A People's History of Kansas City is a production from KCUR Studios with the support from the Mid-Continent Public Library. For further reading, check out the books Buffalo Soldiers by William H. Lecky or Kathy Williams, Slave to Female Buffalo Soldier by Philip Thomas Tucker. You can get in touch with us or connect with other fans of the podcast. Join our Facebook group at kcur.org slash people's history group. Or if you want to email me, you can hit me up at peopleshistorykc at kcur.org. Our team is made up of Mike Russo, Mackenzie Martin, and Byron Love. We had help from KCUR's Vicki Newton, Lisa Rodriguez, Ann Knegendorf, Barb Shelley, Cody Newell, and Krista Henthorn. Music this episode is from Blue Dot Sessions and Circus Marcus. I'm Suzanne Hogan. Take care, and thanks for listening. <laughs>